The Bo Ao Forum for Asia is celebrating its 20th anniversary. On February the 27th, two decades ago, the forum opened with 26 Asian countries and Australia. It sought to bridge Asia and the world. In the past 20 years, it served as a platform for leaders of government, private enterprises, and academia to discuss economic, social, environmental, and related issues. Today, we bring you an interview series with the forum's key figures. First, let's meet Mr. Ban Ki-moon, the current chairman of BOA Forum for Asia. Of course, he's well known for being the former Secretary General of the United Nations. Let's hear what he had to say about the BOA Forum and the goals and the visions of the forum. Tell me about your vision for BOA Forum from now on. I'm honored to be elected as chairman of BOA Forum for Asia. I believe that the Asia and whole world are now changing rapidly. Uh, I hope uh, we are moving uh, ahead toward a better uh, course, a better direction. But it is also true that there are many uh, regional conflict issues, uh, still poverty issues, and the economic uh, prosperity, economic benefits are not evenly, fairly uh, disputed. In that regard, uh, my chairmanship assumption at this uh, critical time has a lot of uh, meanings and implications. I feel a sense of heavy uh, responsibility uh, because the Asia has been taking a greater leadership, uh, particularly with the Chinese economic uh, growth, and Chinese are taking greater uh, leadership role in the, in the world. How do you, as chairman of the World Forum, try to balance this region with the rest of the world in the agenda, in the discussion, and also in your activities. What is important at this time is that the connectivity and mutual cooperation and partnership is much, much more important than domination by certain country over another or some seeking some other way of um, some undesirable uh, partnerships. Uh, China has also uh, announced a very good uh, initiative like uh, uh, Belt and Road Initiative and uh, you, they have already established uh, many years ago uh, Asian uh, Infrastructure Investment Bank. Those can be worked and used as two important mechanisms mm -hmm. uh, to realize uh, his vision. Mm. You talked about connectivity earlier, Mr. Chairman. How is that connectivity likely to be implemented and further developed with a platform such as BOA? Now, China as uh, one of the still developing countries, uh, but has been taking very important initiatives, reaching out to uh, many developing countries, particularly uh, Africa and other Southeast Asian countries. This is a very important one, that to connect China with the, out, the outside world uh, through uh, economic and, and technical cooperation process. Uh, you have already been approaching to many countries. In this world, with the transformative uh, development of technology and transformation, I mean, uh, the communications, then this world has become effectively one small planet Earth. Uh, the national boundaries are not much important at this time. Uh, we are just one family uh, members uh, in this uh, in the small, small uh, planet Earth. That is why what Chinese is now uh, doing is very much a welcome uh, in increasing connectivity among people. Yeah. Well, our forum has a focus on Asia. But many have been saying, you know, it has not been long that Asian countries have been coming together. How to come together and be able to complement one another and have bigger strength and presence of the world? I think that is a big issue. Mr. Chairman, your thought. The Boal Forum was established uh, basically to promote the regional economic and social integration yes. uh, in Asia and for Asia. So 
we are not basically discussing any uh, security related issues uh, but as i said earlier uh, without uh, ensuring the peace and security in this region mm -hmm. uh, then it will be very difficult to uh, expect that there will be smooth and harmonious um, regional uh, cooperation that is the basic uh, uh, problem as well as uh, some points the Boao Forum uh, should uh, continue to uh, promote. Uh, therefore, I am much hopeful. Uh, while globally speaking, we still have uh, so many problems, and Asia can really show example uh, through Boao Forum. Yeah. But Asia's voice is not as strong as the other continents, for example, Europe, for example, North America, even though Asia's economic strength has really reached quite a height. So, Mr. Chairman, what about that? Many scholars uh, have already uh, predicted at the beginning of the 21st century that the 21st century will be led by Asia. I believe that uh, prediction and it is now happening uh, now I think one good example is that uh, like uh, China uh, China has become a uh, second largest economies uh, in in the world Asia itself uh, accounts for 40 percent of um, uh, international uh, growth as well as uh, economic power uh, therefore we should have uh, I think a brighter future when Asia really can play a very uh, crucially important role, raising their voices in international political and economic and uh, social and technological and cultural areas. Mr. Ban Ki-moon, in an earlier conversation, the former UN Secretary General now serves as chairman of the Boal Forum. Next, let's meet Zhou Xiaochuan, He's the vice chairman of the Boa Forum, who's a former governor of the People's Bank of China. He said Asia's biggest economies offer vital lessons for managing the ups and downs faced by central bankers. For example, lessons from Japan's struggles in its lost decade. He the country faces an economic bubble. It's critical to fix it with the right skills. Take a listen. Many of the Asian economies have already become global ones. And the lessons and experiences from these economies are extremely important. Japan, for example, people recently have been talking a lot about what can we learn from the lessons of Japan's so-called lost decade. Of course, others say it's not, not just 10 years, but rather 20 years even. So, Mr. Vice Chairman, what do you think? Each economy should uh, uh, try to avoid uh, this, uh, the serious bubble, uh, either a real estate bubble or financial market bubble or the other kind of bubble, uh, because nobody really knows uh, what kind of a bubble. Uh, in 2007, the uh, United States funded the bubble in subprime uh, uh, so-called subprime crisis. Theoretically, it's uh, very difficult uh, to completely uh, avoid uh, the bubble. So another issue is, uh, or may say second issue, is uh, when you have a certain kind of bubble, hopefully it's not very large bubbles, mm -hmm. uh, that's uh, when the, the, the bubble burst, that's, uh, you need to learn the skills how to deal with uh, that process, uh, not to create uh, too much panic, too much uh, uh, pains, uh, 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 try to avoid uh, mistaking policy making uh, and uh, to reduce those of a painful adjustment. It's a, it's a, a lot of a skill in this regard. What are exactly some of those skills? It's mainly uh, in terms of uh, fiscal policy, uh, monetary policy, and that's uh, the regulatory uh, changes, uh, yeah, which uh, can, you know, that's, uh, uh, to assist the macroeconomic adjustment rather than, yeah, you know, to introduce uh, uh, yeah, uh, a big 
uh, pricks into the bubble. <laughs> uh, so I think third one is uh, fundamentally uh, uh, from the bubble and uh, after the bubble burst, uh, then you come into uh, a process that so you need to have a systematic remedy uh, for uh, the uh, economic fundamental. So uh, actually, that's, uh, uh, you need to consider those of structural reform. Uh, and you need a time to light the corporate sector that the financial sectors to repair their balance sheet. Mm -hmm. mm. uh, it uh, uh, can be a quite a gradual process. Yes. Mm. Such like uh, in China, uh, uh, we had the uh, Asia financial crisis. But the financial sectors uh, uh, started to repair their balance sheet, uh, uh, actually started, I think, early 2003. Uh, but you need to do that. Uh, you need to uh, consider those uh, of, uh, uh, of a structural reform like uh, a labor market flexibility. Uh, it's uh, uh, it's uh, happened in Europe after it's a long term, uh, uh, you know, oh, low growth rate in 1990. Uh, you need to 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 uh, have uh, pension reform, health care reform. Uh. There's always an issue of time, right? You see politics becoming impatient all over the world. So how will economic policies, as you beautifully illustrated these, it has to be a gradual process. I noticed that you said every point with that emphasis vis-a-vis uh, -vis the impatience of politics and the so-called immediate political wills these days. Economic decision maker should have a very good communication with uh, politicians. Uh, try to reach a consensus. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, they don't have a fundamental conflict among each other, uh, but uh, uh, they, when they look at uh, uh, the problem, they may uh, came from a different angle, uh, uh, so especially some of the economic uh, uh, issue uh, need uh, a lot of uh, macro and microeconomic knowledge. Uh, so it needed to, to, to have a good communication. And something is also related to the historical experience. Mm -hmm. You need to talk about what uh, the historical experience uh, we, are, we have in our hand, not only about uh, the specific country, but globally. Yeah. That's, uh, so it's, uh, the, the better communication, I think, is very important. Another is uh, uh, for those of uh, difficult uh, structure uh, changes, you need to, uh, to seize the window. So uh, sometimes uh, there is a good window, sometimes it's not. Uh, partly uh, it's uh, maybe related to the domestic uh, opportunities, but also uh, it's, uh, it's also uh, you, you should look at the international. Uh, so I think that that's uh, uh, also uh, the structure uh, reform uh, sometimes is difficult. Uh, but if uh, you take uh, correct windows to start it, it's uh, easier to reach a consensus. Mr. Zhou Xiaotuan, the former Chinese Central Bank Governor, now Vice Chairman of the Boa Forum for Asia. Challenges to trade relations between the world's biggest economies are nothing new. Japan and the United States were in the same boat three decades ago. In the 1980s, the two had talks to smoothen trade relations, resulting in the 1985 Plaza Accord. The deal touched on currency exchange rates, including 50% depreciation of the U.S. dollar against the Japanese yen. 
But the recessionary effects of the strengthened yen on Japan's export-dependent economy led to the Japanese asset price bubble of the late 1980s. It progressed into a protracted period of deflation and low growth in Japan known as the lost decade. Earlier about that part of history, I sat down with Yasuo Fukuda, who is a former prime minister of Japan and the former chair of the Boal Forum for Asia. He shared his thoughts on the history of the world's trade relations. How would you interpret your approach over the decades dealing with the United States, particularly since uh, the agreement on trade decades ago, which have a bigger impact on your economy for 20 years at least? The signing of the Plaza Accord happened 35 years ago. There was a big debate in Japan about what kind of route Japan chose to pursue in relations with the United States. Since the signing of the Plaza Accord, Japan's economy has been greatly affected by the appreciation of the yen. However, I think that the support of choosing to sign the Plaza Accord at that time was quite strong because in the past, Japan had made great efforts to develop the economy and wanted to catch up with the Western countries. Probably around 1981, Japan's auto exports to the United States have caused concern in the United States. Then some automakers like Nissan consciously reduced exports to the United States. But the Japanese government did not order Nissan to do so. The situation that time was the car manufacturer worried that excessive exports to the United States will affect relations between Japan and the United States. But in that end, Japan and the U.S. still signed this agreement. China-U.S. relations are related to Japan, and Japan-U.S. relations are related to China. And these relations will have an important impact on Europe and South Korea. How should we understand the both constructive well, at the same time, what some describe as concerning events going on at the same time. Is that the balance, Mr. Prime Minister, that you are trying to illustrate Japan today is having in mind? You may feel that Japan's policy will be worrisome. You see, Japan is developing relations with many countries at the same time. So is China. Of course, China-Japan relations are very important. It is also needed to develop relations with other countries. When crafting foreign policy, a country needs to take a holistic view instead of looking at specific examples one by one. The last question, Mr. Prime Minister. Now. The Chinese side, the Chinese President Xi Jinping, praised highly of the achievements of the last emperor of Japan. And now uh, Japan has entered into a new era. The question really is also related to what we discussed today. Is Japan going to have a more sophisticated approach toward China? Will the way Japan is dealing with China China-Japan relations, Japan looking at the world, evolving and changing as a result. Mr. Prime Minister, your wisdom. You see, the Reiwa era is a historic transformation and a historical development, which has little impact on economic development. Just as New Year's Day means a new hope and a new atmosphere, the transformation from Heisei era to Reiwa has the same meaning. The Reiwa era developed on the basis of introspection on the Heisei era, because the Showa era is an unfortunate one, a time of wars. Emperor Akihito very much cherished his father Hirohito's thinking about history. Emperor Akihito himself also has to think a lot about the future of Japan. He gave the nation a new direction, that is, Japan must develop as a peaceful country, and his son Emperor Naruhito, who is the emperor now in the Reiwa era, can also understand his father. It will be reflected in his actions and behaviors.
戦争をしてしまったという開墾の思いをずっとお持ちになってたと思います。Yasuo Fukuda, former Japanese Prime Minister and former Chairman at the Boal Forum for Asia. And that's all we have for today's program. If you'd like to see more, search World Insider or check out our YouTube channel. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook. I'm Tianwei. On behalf of my team, thanks for watching and bye for now.